All right. Hey, VC, how you doing? It's Jamie once again, and welcome back. And we have another unboxing for you on this one. Uh, really excited about this. This one has just arrived, so we're going to unbox it, take a look at what's inside. It's King Crimson Vinyl Box Set Part 2. Uh, this is the uh, box set 1972 to 1974. So we got it in the cardboard, and the only uh, indication on the outer box is the uh, 1972 to 1974. It's just got a little flap like that. And inside and here we go hopefully you'll be able to see this it's continuing with the very sort of straightforward black box you can sort of barely see the king crimson 1972 to 1974 there uh the full listing on the back and for the first time on vinyl, 40th anniversary editions of King Crimson Studio albums mixed and produced by Steve Wilson, of course, he's everywhere, and Robert Flip, Robert Fripp, plus a complete LP of alternate takes, mixes of Lark's Tongues and Aspic, mixed and produced by Stephen Wilson, plus the complete 1974 Asbury Park concert on two LPs, mixed and produced by Robert Fripp, David Singleton, and Tony Ar Arnold, all new to vinyl. The LPs newly cut from the masters and pressed on 200 gram super heavyweight vinyl. Package also includes a 24 page pictorial history of the 1972-74 lineups and a poster featuring the band's album art from 1969 to 1974 as it appeared in the original 1975 Young Person's Guide vinyl sleeve interior. Okay, so there you go. Once again, we'll take a look at the selections of LPs, including Red. Amazing album. Okay, and there you have it. Let's take a look inside, shall we? And <clears throat> I certainly do love this period of... Of course, I think I like all the periods of King Crimson, to tell you the truth. But this is a great period, certainly with the uh, album Red and Lark's Tongue and Aspect, Starless and Bible Black. Wow. Okay. And I think they've done a pretty good job uh, with this uh, series overall in terms of their packaging and whatnot. Okay, and that just, I would assume that comes off the back. Yeah, that just slips off the back. I'll just put that there for the moment. And again, continuing in the slip uh, case, which a lot of people really seem to prefer this. To me, it's, I'm okay, uh, you know, depending on the packaging, how it comes across, but a lot of people really seem to like the slip case. So it just comes out like this. And like that. And again, yeah, just just plain black. As I say, you can just barely see the King Crimson there. And then the albums just fit in like that. Just plain black. And uh, yeah, let's take a look inside. Okay, let's see if we can maybe grab the booklet here and uh, that poster they were talking about. Okay. Oh, well, this is rather nice. Wonderful size. Check that out. Nice pictorial of all of the albums there. Very nice. Okay. And then the booklet that's included, uh, certainly when you're getting into the John uh, Wetton years. Go Bruford. here. That's nice, uh, likely billboard or trade magazine ads, that sort of thing. Now, obviously not seeing a lot of text or anything like that, but some vintage photos. Robert Fripp and Company. That's some lyrics there of the Night Watch. I don't know if they're doing another uh, vinyl box set after this one. I haven't heard. I've just had information about the first one and this one, but I don't know if they're doing another one after this. All right, so there's the booklet. Put that over there. And let's uh, take a look at the album, see how we're doing here. Okay. So we've got Lark's Tongues in Aspic. 
All right, let's see if we can uh, take a look inside, shall we? And it's kind of nice. It doesn't look like, yeah, they don't have uh, the uh, price codes on them, which is quite nice. So it's not intended to be sold individually, which is, I think, is always a good thing. I just, you know, it just I, it adds to the authenticity of it when you're not including the price codes, that sort of thing. At least I think so. All right, let's see if we can get the first one out. Take a look inside. Sorry for the delay. And then inside, now we've got the sleeve uh, insert. And then continuing with their theme of the stylized sleeves. And then, yeah, the heavyweight vinyl, I think 200 gram, I think we mentioned. And then that, and that. Okay, so here, there you have that one. All right, and then we carry on with King Crimson's Starless and Bible Black. All right, since I'm standing, I don't think I'll be able to do the uh, the Matt Hayes experiment of <laughs> opening up uh, the albums. Uh, he, I don't know if you've seen Matt Hayes' video, and I actually still do it from time to time. Uh, what he'll do, uh, especially if you're seated or whatnot, and if you're wearing jeans, you can take the album just to open it up, and uh, sort of along the, the crease in your pants on your lap there, and just kind of from side to side, and it actually does work. But uh, since I'm standing... Uh, that's not going to be quite so easy, so. <laughs> All right, so this one's a gatefold. So we'll open that right up. And we have that. And then the stylized sleeve once again. I think, I think Paul took a little tumble there. <laughs> from the little beetle dolls there. Or the beetle figurines. And there you go. Sorry about that, Paul. All right. Now, certainly one of my favorite albums from this series, this is Red. Uh, John Wetton on this uh, album alone. Just his singing, his bass playing, Bill Bruford, uh, Robert Fripp. What an amazing trio. And just a great, great album. That seems to have really um, sort of increased in its value over the years. So certainly people... More and more people getting turned on to this album. Okay, let's take a look inside. Oops, almost got it out there for you. Okay, and uh, yeah, there's no, I don't think there's any insert or anything on that, on this one. Just double check for you. No. And then continuing with the stylized sleeves. And there you go. Okay, and carrying on, uh, we've got the remix album, uh, Lex Tongues in Aspic, and we'll take a look inside with this one too. Whoop! <laughs> when, when in doubt, just use your teeth, right? <laughs> Perhaps I shouldn't have done that, but I did. Unless I've got the order wrong, I think this is the remix album, is it not? Let me just double check for you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's the remix album. Okay. Yeah, because it should say on here. There's the back. I can say, they're so identical looking. Yeah, it doesn't really it doesn't really tell you off the back any of the differences. The back's almost identical, other than the color uh, scheme in the front. But I'm assuming that's the remix album. Interesting. Okay, so inside, and we've got that, and that, and then one more. Okay, let's open that up. This is a yeah, double album. Let's open this one right up for you. 
and take a look inside. I'll have to check the back of the sleeve again to find out which one's the remixed album and which one isn't. Okay. And finally, sorry for the delay there. And there we go. And then opens as such. And then continuing with the theme, I'm assuming, of the sleeves. Now the sleeve's slightly different on this. Again, advertising the others in the collection, and there, and there. And I don't know if there's something different on the other album. Same sleeve, same style sleeve, and yeah, some different pictures on there, and there. Okay, so there you have it. That is the King Crimson box set. And uh, yes, there we go. There's the uh, the listing of the albums just in terms of the color. So that would be the original Lark's Tongue and Aspect. And then that is the uh, remix one. Uh, it's interesting, though. They don't even tell you on the on the back of the cover. All right. So that's going to wrap it up for this one. Thank you so much for dropping by. Uh, do take care. Hit subscribe and like and that bell notification thing. And uh, we'll chat again real soon. Take care. Bye bye.